So, has any everybody else in the committee uh, been recognized? Oh, sorry, Mr. Miller. Uh, the chair now yields back, and I recognize my stealthy friend from the state of New York, Mr. Molinaro, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that is not a description that's ever been used in my uh, for, for me, but I appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank you all uh, for being here, and actually, I want to continue a little bit uh, uh, from uh, my colleagues' uh, uh, comments. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, are. Uh, uh, this week, we do acknowledge uh, uh, truck drivers, and I, I appreciate all of you in, in one capacity or another express uh, uh, both uh, the need to acknowledge the, the work of America's truck drivers, but uh, as each of you has uh, alluded to, either directly or, or indirectly, the need to continue to support uh, truck drivers uh, uh, in this country. Having uh, served at the local level during the pandemic uh, and economic shutdown, two very different things, but they occurred at the same time, uh, I can tell you that I saw firsthand the, the value and the great work uh, of uh, uh, of America's truck drivers, but also the weakness uh, in uh, in our supply chain. So I, um, I, I will tell you that uh, um, obviously automated uh, uh, commercial vehicles is exciting. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a technology that we already know is underway and 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 being used. As my colleague referenced, um, I, what I, I I want to, however, um, put an exclamation mark next to. Uh, is that it is critically imperative uh, that as the technology uh, grows and innovation continues, uh, that we do that uh, in partnership with truck drivers, law enforcement, and emergency responders. Uh, it is imperative uh, that we work together with truck drivers, uh, law enforcement, and emergency responders. And to that end, I would offer, uh, as, as and if the federal government uh, starts to create uh, uh, greater guidance, uh, there is a seismic change in emergency response and the need to ensure uh, that emergency responders are able to uh, 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 to respond to incidents uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that 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 uh, this kind of uh, technology uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, brings to the fore, um, Mr. Farr. I, I know that uh, my colleague was asking for a yes or no answer, and um, it was interesting to me because earlier in your testimony, you basically said um, yes, or you basically said no. The technology isn't quite there yet, and that we need to, to rely in partnership on truck drivers. And at some point. Uh, you said um, uh, uh, autonomous trucking needs truck drivers. I understand what that means, transition, et cetera, but um, I, th I feel like you, you said that. Um, and, and while the technology is exciting, uh, we certainly do have uh, a concern for loss of jobs. And so I wonder what projection has been done to identify uh, both the pace of, uh, 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 of expansion of the technology and how that results in and what that would result in job loss. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate the opportunity to clarify. What, what I was trying to get at earlier is that when you look at uh, autonomous driving systems generally, whether passenger cars, shuttles, zero occupancy delivery vehicles, and, and trucks, we are seeing these applications play out. They, we have situations where there are passenger cars going in in various cities. There are shuttles that are operating in places like senior centers and in, in university campuses and whatnot. So those are all happening today, and we see that technology is already improving safety, is improving mobility and accessibility for, for their residents in that area. With respect to autonomous trucking, I think as we're seeing today, this technology continues to play out. You see some very exciting partnerships and pilots that are, that are being announced, but there are companies that are, are needing to do additional development to get to that space. And so it's a little more That nuanced. I understand. I, so I serve on the aviation subcommittee and we talk a lot about advanced um, uh, uh, air mobility and, and that technology is gonna fill a void. Um, you, this technology is going to create uh, the loss of, of something. And that is um, trucks being driven by, by human beings. What's the timeline? In other words, what do we think the build out is and how do we, uh, what will that to do to, uh, uh, to the loss of jobs? Not, uh, not the broad. Uh, absolutely. We see this technology as augmenting truck drivers. We, we need them in partnership. The reality is that the volume of freight- But you'll moving... need less of them. Not necessarily. We, this, is going to, this is going to fill different parts of the market. As we know, we have a massive truck driver shortage. We have more volume of freight that is, that is going to be coming down, down the lane. And so we need to figure out a way to move this to support manufacturers, farmers, ranchers. Those are things that are absolutely essential. We want to be a part of that solution and work in partnership with truck drivers to do that. So can you, in the, and, and of course, I, I assume uh, everyone at the panel, uh, perhaps, uh, you, you'll commit uh, uh, to working with Congress uh, in partnership with truck drivers and emergency uh, response and law enforcement as we develop those guidelines, that commitment uh, that the organization is making? Absolutely. We're we already doing that. We look forward to doing that in the future. Mr. Spear wanted to say yes, too. Absolutely, it's my job. <laughs> um, I, um, I, I only have a few seconds, but um, 
Um, I wanted to, uh, to ask you, uh, Mr. Spear, uh, what, just speak to the, the, you know, the, the exciting consequence of this uh, technology and, and how uh, folks all across uh, the country might, uh, might benefit. Well, I think innovation should be embraced. Uh, you know, I just want to be clear on what I was saying earlier is that I, I don't view, I didn't say people you know, were going to be guaranteed their job. I said I don't view it as being threatened by innovation. There is a gap. There is a gap of, of meeting demand and our ability to add talent. And as long as that gap exists and it's going to grow, there's a room for automation and technology to play. So we're not threatened by it. We should embrace it. And we look forward to working with this committee to you know, really work on this issue and put some definition around it long term. Mr. Chairman, if I just might say, I certainly support uh, the technology. It is critically important that we do that in partnership with the people who are sitting at home thinking that innovation is going to take their job. And that can't happen without them at the table. The gentleman yields back.